tonight, a push to keep schools open and restrictions limited when it comes to COVID spreading. Plus, clearing up some uncertainty, the protocols for health care workers and how it's impacting hospital staffing. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Thanks for making MTN a part of your evening. I'm Hallie Schwinnard. And I'm Tom Wiley filling in for Tim McGonigal. First tonight, Cascade County officials are considering possible restrictions to curb the spread of COVID-19. But it appears there won't be new ordinances just yet. Matt Holzaffel joins us live now with the latest on COVID-19 in Cascade County. Yeah, good evening, Hallie and Tom. At an interagency press conference today, Cascade County and Great Falls officials addressed the recent rise in COVID-19 cases and the possibility of future restrictions. Here's what some officials had to say. I think we're considering all kinds of restrictions at this point. We are not looking at a shutdown like we had back in March, but we are looking for different ways to be able to keep this under control. According to Cascade City County Health Officer Tricia Gardner, Cascade County has reported just over 1,300 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Despite that, restrictions on gatherings or bars and restaurants aren't coming just yet. We have to look at all options to help curb the spread of this virus. Great Falls Public Schools Superintendent Tom Moore reaffirmed the district's commitment to staying open for in-person learning. In conjunction with the advice from all of our health care folks, we're going to keep schools open as long as we can, as long as it is safe and manageable to do so. For me, I, uh, this terminology, exponential growth, was something I needed to look up again so that I understood what it meant. Officials from several health care organizations in Great Falls emphasize the stress that hospitals are under and ask that asymptomatic patients stay home. There's more people coming in than what are leaving. It is getting bigger and bigger and it is putting a burden. We're working through it. We're being very conscious of our resources and working throughout the state. That is my biggest plea for everybody that we're maintaining and we're doing our job, but we're getting stressed and we need some help. And that help is to stay home, wash your hands, wear your mask, and social distance whenever possible. Officials from the Great Falls Clinic, Malmstrom Air Force Base, and Alluvian Health spoke about how maintaining the spread of this virus is a community effort. Dr. Richard Geyer, an infectious disease expert from the Great Falls Clinic, said that while people over the age of 70 and people who are overweight are at the biggest risk for COVID-19, him and his him and his comrades in the healthcare industry have seen perfectly healthy people impacted by COVID-19. Reporting live in Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Well, earlier this week, a benefits employer reached out to us saying they were confused about whether they should quarantine after being exposed to the coronavirus. Now, today's press conference, Benefits cleared up some of that confusion. The chief medical officer at Benefits said employees who are exposed to the virus but don't have symptoms will most likely still have to work. Now, for most people, getting exposed to the virus by being in contact with a positive person means you have to quarantine for 14 days. But for healthcare workers, the rules are a little different, especially when they're short staff. Now, up until today, Benefits said they were following CDC guidance to uh, keep their employees safe, but they hadn't told us which guidance they were referring to. Benefits Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bridget Brennan says it has a lot to do with staffing. If we consider potential exposures as um, something that mandates a 14-day quarantine, we would not have a hospital or a staff to, to run the hospital. If you're symptomatic, you're not working. If you are positive, you're not working. Um, if you have a potential exposure, there's a good chance we're going to have you work. Now, Benefits is asking employees who have been exposed to monitor your symptoms daily and get tested if any develop. Republican gubernatorial candidate Greg Gianforte's attendance of a Helena concert that's now been linked to several COVID-19 cases has become an issue in the governor's race. Democratic candidate Mike Cooney says Gianforte ex exhibited reckless behavior and should get tested for COVID-19, but Gianforte has declined. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has more. Greg Gianforte attended the October 3rd concert and led the crowd in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. The Cooney campaign also released a picture of Gianforte getting his picture taken with a concert goer without wearing a mask. 
Cooney said Friday that Gianforte should get tested for COVID-19 and suspend all in-person campaigning until he gets the test results. But the Gianforte campaign says he has had no symptoms of the disease within the past two weeks and does not plan to get tested. Cooney said he is getting tested for COVID-19 and noted that Gianforte attended an in-person debate against Cooney in Missoula three days after being at the concert. Cooney said Gianforte has consistently flouted public health guidelines by not wearing a mask at public events and is not taking the threat of COVID-19 seriously. Gianforte's campaign says Cooney's statements are the actions of a desperate politician and that he's trying to politicize a public health and economic crisis for partisan gain. Cooney and Gianforte are locked in what's considered a relatively close race for governor, although most recent polls have shown Gianforte with a lead of several percentage points. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Cooney and Gianforte are running for the seat being vacated by Governor Steve Bullock. Libertarian, Libertarian candidate Lyman Bishop of Kalispell is also on the ballot for governor. Many of us may see our first round of snow this weekend. Here's meteorologist Curtis Grevenance with a look at the forecast. Well, hello everybody and happy Friday to you all. The weekend's here and so is a pretty good storm across a lot of the state right now. A lot of clouds, wind, some showers, and even a little mix of rain and snow up into uh, northeast Montana. But a large part of central and western Montana is under a winter weather advisory that right now is only going till Saturday. But let me tell you, that sun, that uh, Sunday, will also be very snowy. So it's start to finish. We've got snow here across a lot of the state. Watch out, slippery when white. For the first uh, time this uh, season, it's uh, our first time driving in some snow here for a while. And those temperatures, like the flux capacitor going all over the place, that means a mix of rain and snow. I'll have more on the full forecast coming up. Coming up, a measure to limit local government's ability to regulate concealed weapons. That's on your ballot. Details next. Clip. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Welcome back. Montana voters will consider five ballot measures in the upcoming election. One that has not received much attention would limit local government's ability to regulate concealed weapons. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian takes, her takes a closer look at Legislative Referendum 130. During the 2019 legislative session, Montana lawmakers voted to put a referendum before voters, asking them whether they wanted to strip cities and towns of the power to regulate the carrying of concealed weapons. LR 130 would remove an exception in state law that specifically gives local governments the authority to regulate concealed carry. It would also take away their power to restrict unconcealed firearms except in publicly owned and occupied buildings, and their authority to take action to prevent groups like felons and those with mental illnesses from possessing guns. State Representative Matt Regeer, a Republican from Columbia Falls, sponsored the proposal. He says it came about after Missoula approved a city ordinance requiring background checks on all gun sales or transfers. That ordinance was eventually overturned by the Montana Supreme Court. Regeer says he wants to avoid a patchwork of different regulations across Montana. Concealed weapon uh, permit holders, such as myself, we want to follow the law. That's why we get permits. So having city ordinances all across the state you travel from east to west and there's 20 different ordinances you've got to know about, like that's making it impossible to, to even follow the law. So let's keep it uniform underneath uh, state and federal laws. Tim Burton, executive director of the Montana League of Cities and Towns, says he hasn't seen evidence that the current local ordinances are putting undue burdens on gun owners. He says he doesn't believe the current system should be changed. So for over 130 years, uh, we've been able to protect uh, Second Amendment rights, uh, including the right to protect ourselves, with uh, the ability to uh, have some local say in terms of how that's done. Regeer says he doesn't believe gun policy should be handled at the local level. He says enough protections exist in state and federal law to keep guns out of prohibited places and away from felons and those with mental illnesses. I'm a local control guy, um, but I'm not for local control when it's infringing upon our rights. Burton says he believes LR 130 would create too many questions and take away from the predictability of existing rules. It will be confusing. It's going to cause a lot of litigation. And really, again, uh, it it takes away any community 
statewide discussions or decisions. LR-130 is almost identical to another bill Regeer proposed during the 2019 session. That bill passed both the House and Senate, but was vetoed by Governor Steve Bullock. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Other measures on the ballot include a marijuana legalization effort and technical changes to the Montana Constitution to remove language that has been invalidated by the courts. Starting Monday, another satellite election office will be open on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. The new office at Hartfield High School is for voters in Pend Oreille County. It'll offer in-person registration, early voting, and voting on Election Day. The office will be open every Monday and on Election Day from 9 to 5. Pend Oreille County is opening the office after being sued by several Native American rights groups who claim that voters on the Blackfeet Reservation didn't have adequate access to election services. They said it was a violation of the Voting Rights Act. Now, we spoke with one lawyer who called the move a victory for the Blackfeet Nation. I hope that what it shows is that, um, you know, that the Native Americans uh, are equally entitled to participate uh, in the elections um, and that if they are not, if they're being denied that opportunity, we will absolutely uh, fight for them. The Native American Voting Rights Fund and the Montana ACLU filed the suit. Well, we've got snow coming down this weekend and the possibility of more snow into next week. The forecast is coming up next. For Storm tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Gray. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, here we are looking at uh, Geyser back at the high woods, and we've got a lot of clouds, some raindrops here. Rain for the time being. It will be going over to snow, though, later tonight. 56 in Great Falls, pretty windy day, some gusts up over 30 miles per hour in the capital. Temperatures made it up into the lower 60s uh, here with some gusts up to about 33 miles per hour. The cold front is still off towards the north of the Canadian border. That will be sinking southward here through the rest of the evening and the overnight. Northeast Montana, cold enough for a little mix of some rain and snow north and northeast of the Glasgow area, but some strong winds right now. The good news is the wind will be dying down here through the overnight hours into Saturday morning. And we won't have much wind uh, as, as we've been dealing with here over the last few days through the course of the weekend. But still, uh, we've got a high wind warning for the Rocky Mountain front and then down through Cascade County all the way to Lewistown and through the Judith Gap area. Some gusts may be up over 65 miles per hour for the rest of this evening. And a winter weather advisory. You can see the area under this winter weather advisory. Now the snow will be on and off all weekend long. So by Sunday afternoon and evening, the plains here will pick up between two and six inches of snow. The valleys, including the Helena Valley down there around Townsend, White Sulphur Springs, two to six inches of snow along the Rocky Mountain front, up to 10 inches of snow and in the Bob and down the Continental Divide, the big belts, the little belts, up to 16 inches of snow. Again, this is by Sunday evening when we will see uh, those uh, snow totals reach. But a little mix of rain and snow, northeast Montana. Uh, great to see more in the way of precipitation on the Yogo fire. Some showers, great rain out here through Shoto County. Snow levels are up pretty high until you get into northeast Montana. You go right up around St. Marie and we've got a little mix of some rain and snow. So heading through tonight, snow continues in northeast Montana. Rain showers, maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms going over to snow by about about midnight for Lewistown, Great Falls, Helena, Cup Bank a little earlier than that. And look how the precipitation sets up around Lewistown, Great Falls, Cup Bank, down the Continental Divide and continues through Saturday uh, throughout the afternoon. And right when it starts to look like the precipitation is tapering off, another round of low pressure and unsettled weather will be moving in snow increasing through Sunday morning and spreading eastward once again by Sunday afternoon into Lewistown and Great Falls and Cup Bank uh, here. Notice uh, Haver and the Glasgow area not picking up much in the way of snow. So by Saturday morning, maybe a couple inches around Great Falls and Helena and down the Rocky Mountain front out through the Lewistown area. Snow continues for Saturday. 
snow continues on Sunday here, and by Sunday afternoon, there you can see that accumulation again, really Cup Bank, Great Falls, Lewistown, south and west of there is where the heaviest of snow will be. Not much in Haver by Sunday afternoon, evening, Cup Bank up to four, Helena up to six. In the Helena Hills around town, double those numbers. Could be a foot of snow in the mountains around Helena. Great Falls up to six in Lewistown, up to about eight inches of snow. It's warm now, a lot of us looking at some rain showers, but tonight, look at these temperatures dropping down into the teens and the 20s. Certainly cold enough to support the precipitation coming down as snow. Tomorrow, a lot of us waking up to the snowflakes flying. Snow continues closer to the continental divide here for most of the day. Certainly colder temperatures. And then Sunday, another round of snow, mainly in the western and southern parts of the state. Here's the seven day forecast for Helena. A snowy weekend, maybe about up to six inches by Sunday afternoon. And then it gets a little warmer on Monday. Some rain mixes in and we're back up to 50 on Tuesday in four great falls. It's a snowy cold weekend. Some rain and snow mixing on Monday, briefly warmer Tuesday before another storm moves in Wednesday, Wednesday night into Thursday. Still to come, local ranchers speak out about the grizzly bears and their status on the endangered list. Stay with us. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Welcome back. The nation's top fish and wildlife official now has a better understanding of what some local ranchers think should be done about grizzly bears. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Director, along with Senator Steve Daines, held a roundtable discussion with ranchers this morning. Other ranchers shared their experiences with bears. They believe the bears are no longer endangered and should be taken off the endangered species list so that management of the bears can be turned over to the state. I know that delisting comes with a whole gamut of uh, lawsuits and those sorts of things, but maybe there's options while they're listed uh, to give us some more flexibility. In January, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service began a five-year review of the grizzly bear's status as a threatened species. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello everybody, here's a look at the forecast for the Helena area through the weekend into next week. A cold, snowy weekend, literally freezing for highs both Saturday and Sunday with up to six inches of snow by Sunday afternoon and for Great Falls, highs only in the 20s. It's a wintry weekend with again up to six inches by Sunday afternoon. Well, just in time for the holidays, film buffs had the chance to own the stars of some of the most iconic seasonal TV specials of all time. All right, two of the figurines used for the animated 1964 Christmas classic, my favorite, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, <laughs> are going on the auction block. The 11-inch tall Santa, 6-inch tall Rudolph were created by a Japanese puppet maker more than 55 years ago. Now, according to The Hollywood Reporter, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is the most beloved holiday film and longest-running TV special uh, of its kind. The one-of-a-kind stop-motion animation uh, figures are expected to fetch as much as quarter of a million dollars in option Ooh. profiles in history. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of money. For it goes on November be. 13th, which uh, is also a Friday the 13th. Oh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> so <Nice>. good luck. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight at 9 and 10.